Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Nikon Z mount 24-120 S lens. Is this lens truly the all-arounder that everyone claims it to be, or is it all hype? Let's get into it and find out. Spoiler alert, it's it's not overhyped. Alright, well, if we're gonna talk about a lens, let's get, let's get the lens out. And I have it right here, right? Here she is. Smooth zoom range. You got your, let's see if I can talk about it and look and point to it. You have your function button right here. And you have your autofocus, manual focus switch right here. You have your zoom control right here. And this is your manual focus, or it's customizable control ring right here. Zoom control, customizable control, which I use for manual focus. This lens is not that not that big of a lens comparative. If you get the 2.8 variety, it's gonna be quite a bit larger than this. And I'm gonna tell you that you don't need those extra stops of light. F4, this, F, this quality of this lens at BNS class, it has all the, the coatings, all the, lens flare resistance chromatic abbreviations yada 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 anyway it's a great lens let's get into it so let's 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 start with build quality this lens it feels very 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 well built it's good use of metal and coatings along with the nice rubber control rings and very smooth zoom in and out let's see if i can put it to the mic Sounds so good, doesn't it? That's dumb. Let's move on. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, this lens is very, very lightweight for its zoom range. This goes 24 millimeters all the way out to 120 millimeters, where a lot of the other lenses in this price range only do 24 to 70. This lens goes 24 to 120. Now I had the 24 to 70 f4 and I used it to film weddings probably about a year and a half ago. And then I found this on sale last year and I was going to Ireland and I wanted something that had a little bit more reach and I heard that there wasn't any optical loss at that further reach and I'll share some images along the way to, to show you but yeah this this lens has the same optical quality of the 24 to 70 but with an extra 50 millimeters or more reach so you can't go wrong so so as far as first impressions go with this lens it was impressive like all the nikon s quality glass that i've used it was a very impressively well built and look at this this is me holding it with my hands look how small that lens is i often shoot with this at f4 as wide open as possible if you know anything about my shooting i often shoot every lens at wide open as possible i only stop down when i have way too much light and i need to stop down or if I'm trying to get a certain effect, or if I'm doing landscape type photography. Aside from that, I'm usually pretty wide open on my lenses. And of course, when I'm doing group shots, I'll stop down. But the good thing about this lens is when you're doing group shots, even at f4, as long as you only have maybe two or three people deep, you're not gonna see a lot of roll off on people's faces, and you're not gonna see a lot of out of focus areas. I would stop down to f6, 5.6, f8, if you are going to shoot group shots three people deep or more but aside from that you'll find that f4 is a great aperture for group shots and at wide open at 24 millimeters this thing performs very well it has very little distortion and any, any distortion it does have you can fix in lightroom with a single click of a button and, and when i shot you know the weddings that i've shot and when i took it to ireland i was extremely impressed by the fact it was able to control chromatic abbreviations and lens flares quite well with, with very little issues. I'd never put a hood on this thing. I didn't even bring the lens hood with me. It's just too bulky. It was too big for the kit. And I don't think I needed it. Now Ireland is mostly overcast skies, but even at the wedding, I didn't use the lens hood in these photos here and I didn't need it as well. This goes without saying, but Nikon's not gonna put their S branding on a lens that they haven't tested through the paint, taken through the paces, tested well, and made sure it's producing top quality images. Nikon doesn't just put S on every lens that's made. If you get an S-class lens, 
you're going to get S quality for the most part. I really haven't found a Nikon S lens that has disappointed me. Never, not once. Now that there is a, was it a 50 to 200 or something along those lines, that disappointed me. But then I saw it wasn't S class, S -class quality. The images were quite soft throughout the entire aperture range and the focal range, but not with this bad boy. So, so while, you know, the F4, which is its fastest aperture, might not create the most creamiest of bokehs at 24 millimeters, but when you zoom all the way out to 120 millimeters or anything between 70 and 120 millimeters, you're gonna get that great bokeh. And that's due to the longer focal length. So don't be afraid to say, well, I'm not gonna get the creamy bokeh with this lens. You will at the longer focal ranges. You just won't at the 24 millimeter focal range. And that's to be expected. But for the compact size, the trade-off is very minimal with that one stop of light between f2.8 and f4. So let's let's talk about the pros and cons of the 24 to 120 from Nikon. And I'll throw them up on the screen here while I go over them. Obviously, let's go start with the pros. Uh, excellent image quality. It's very versatile zoom range, getting that extra 50 millimeters of reach that you don't get with the 24 to 70s. The constant f4 aperture is the huge pro. You don't want a variable aperture knowing that you can shoot at f4 to 120 is going to give you that creamy bokeh. It's sharp across the frame, great for close-ups with minimal distortion even at 24 millimeters. It's fast and accurate with the autofocus. Very solid, very well built, and it's weather sealed. All right, let's go through the cons. It's obviously not the most budget-friendly option. There is other more budget-friendly options, but they're not gonna be as class quality, so take that with caution. There is some vignetting at w the wider images, but it's nothing that Lightroom can't handle. And it may be a bit bulky for cameras like the Nikon ZF that I'm filming on today. And by the way, I'm filming with the 40 millimeter F2 today, just trying a different focal length, and then filming at F2 to see what the happens to the background in the 3D pop with the 40 millimeter. I have been using 28 millimeter f2.8 till today um, for the most part. Let's see what it does. So to surmise things, this is a fantastic sharp lens throughout the entire zoom range of 24 to 120 and even at the entire aperture range from f4 to f16. I really didn't see a lot of softness in the images across the focal range. Now I'm not going to go into eye charts and looking at corners and this, that and the other because no one uses a lens like that. This is not a clinical test. This is art. We are photographers. So we want the lens to be sharp. We want chromatic abbreviations to be minimized. We want distortion to be minimized, but we're not going nuts with corner to corner sharpness. That's ridiculous. If you want corner to corner sharpness, you're gonna focus stack anyway. I'm telling you, this 24 to 120 is a fantastic lens. It'll be a great addition to your lineup. When I shoot weddings, I use the 50 millimeter for portraits and I use 24 to 120 for everything else. And it's not never disappointed me. So I don't wanna make this review long and drawn out. Bottom line, this is the lens you were looking for and you won't be disappointed, just get it. As Flossie Carter says, it's a major, major, major go. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions on the Nikon 24 to 120, if you want to talk more about it, if you want to see me do any more testing with it, let me know. I've shot three weddings with it, several videos, and I've went to Ireland and pretty much it stayed on my camera the entire time I was there. It's a great lens. I love the lens, the best, most versatile lens that I have, and I believe it's in Nikon, Nikon's Z-mount lineup, period. It's this bad boy. That's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Peace. <laughs> I'm a minute and a half in and I still haven't done this yet. Okay. S-glass, quality, no. I don't know why I go. Hi everyone, <laughs> let me stop that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, you can't even see the ding. Anyway, let me get started.